Nation. Welcome again to Rendezvous Africa. I'm your host, Ter House McConan. Today, Frank has a special interview for us with a distinguished fine artist from Ghana. This is Frank, your regular host for African Rendezvous. My guest today is Sam Bento, a renowned artist whose works have been all over the world. He has some emphasis in his works, and that's exactly what I want to begin with. Sam, welcome. Thank you. What is the emphasis in your work? What makes it so unique? The technique of expression um, in my art is pointillism. Mm -hmm. Pointillism is a, a technique in art that employs the use of dots to create images and uh, shapes and forms. Um, this evolved over my um, innate ability to play with dots to create images and um, over the years through practice I found that I could add a certain sense of dynamism to my images that give it a three-dimensional lifelike character mm -hmm. which has allowed me to um, make the stories I tell through my paintings very impacting and um, for the function that um, my art is geared at which is informing and provoking or awakening and inspiring people of African descent to look at the cultures that have nurtured them with open arms instead of the fear and the low thing that comes most of the time when we look at what we are through Western eyes. Mm -hmm. And um, I use pointillism is like, we say an individual broomstick cannot sweep. But when you gather so many broomsticks together, you make a strong broom that can sweep. An individual dot is just there the smallest unit in the line. But um, if you join so many dots together, you get a line. And um, I was inspired by looking at the, the great artists who were before me, who could draw very well, um, to come up with a technique that if my work was compared to them, would stand on its own. Mm -hmm. And um, it dawned on me that since I painted with dots, if I could control the dots, I could draw anything, you know. And um, over 40, 45 years of dotting, I mastered the technique of magically, I'll use the word magically manipulating the dots mm -hmm. to give whatever I do an attention-getting essence. That would make whoever was passing by take a second look that all the needs, a second look, mm -hmm. so that the message in what I'm creating gets through. What are the messages you're trying to portray or send across to your audience? Sankofa, let's go back to the past. The wisdom of the past that will guide us into the future. For me, what I've known that has inspired me is the community, the family, and the people that nurtured me to become what I am. I'm a Ghanaian, um, half Fanti, half Ghan, so I've got the best of, bo best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And I speak English. Fortunately, in the 50s when we were growing up, we had good dedicated teachers who made sure that we expressed ourselves eloquently. And that's when it's a spoken word. But um, the spoken word inspires and triggers images. And for me, the rich kente are dances. The throbbing, crisscrossing rhythms of our, our music, the sweetness of our voices, the tales, the stories that fanned and fueled our imagination. All those things have become the ingredients in this wonderful meal that's been cooking in my heart and mind mm -hmm. and has made what I do today um, very functional and I think very necessary 
and um, I know I'm one of many who are using their talents that have been honed into skills to help raise the consciousness of our people. Mm -hmm. Was this a vision? Was this something that came out from your parents besides the fact that you were inspired by others? Because pointillism is very unique and very few people do understand it. What was the motivating force for you? Um, when you read the, the Western art books, everybody points to Surat as the, the key proponent of pointillism. But I look at the traditional African arts. Some of our people use dots to, as patination on their pots and the fabric, you know, and other decorative forms that were put on our houses and the things that are creative expressions in the traditional African setting. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, um, dotting became a pastime. Maybe it, it evolved out of um, doodling in the class when maybe the teacher was boring me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, we got spanked a couple of times for that. But then when I realized that um, I could use these dots to create interesting things that got the attention of my parents and uh, the teachers, critically the teachers, it became something that I kept doing. Mm -hmm. And the more intricate, the better. You know, um, I found pointillism to be very therapeutic. It's maybe like somebody doing needlepoint or mm -hmm. knitting or crochet, crocheting, you know. Um, Mine, mine was to play with uh, dots and um, initially black and white. And I'll say fortunately or unfortunately, I'm colorblind. But during the process of my evolution as an artist, I interned in the Ghana publishing, the, the Ghana survey department in Accra, who were one of the leading map making institutions in the British Commonwealth. And that's where I learned that the color printing process employed four different colored dots to print the colored pictures we see in the magazines. But this is done mechanically by the printing press. Mm -hmm. But I said, that's a machine working. Now, if I, who uses dots, and I'm human, and I can add soul to my manipulation of dots, then I could come up with something that will make the machine look like child's play. Mm -hmm. So it's that fun thing, you know, making something that would normally be tedious. A fun thing but then the function and what I knew I was doing because somebody needed to tell a story that would leave a long-lasting effect on those who heard it and my story is an echo of the stories I heard from the elders around me who told of how they endured the effects of colonialism and still kept our traditional our traditional beliefs and our culture intact one one person is Kofi Antubam, the late Kofi Antubam, mm -hmm. who has a mural on the wall of the Accra Community Center, which was one of my most inspirational pieces of art as a child. That painting um, was based on the, it's one of the Psalms, I think Psalm 133. Mm -hmm. Behold how pleasant it is that men dwell together as brothers in harmony, mm -hmm. something like that. Let us live together as good neighbors. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been any other, I'll say, mural of such caliber on any wall in the capital mm -hmm. today. And we need more of that. We need more murals of inspiration all over the place. Because the children who are being born today need to see images that are inspirational, that, are, uh, that promote um, us loving humanity instead of all the war, the bombing, and the fear and all mm -hmm. what I say, excuse me, say nonsense. Yes. Yes, we need to we need to we need to give humanity a dose of of happiness. And um, uh, for me, art is the tool for that. You left an irony by saying that you're colorblind. I I cannot continue this interview without asking you, and that this is the first time I can hear an artist telling anyone or or me for that matter that he is colorblind you're not telling me that you cannot differentiate from green and red? Um, I've learned to use color or feel color like how a blind person uses a cane to walk. And one of the things that for me, um, 
I was having a lot of problems with uh, identifying color for quite a while. I mean, my dad must have given me so many knocks and they would send me to go and bring a green bottle and I'd bring something else. But I was fortunate enough to have spent a summer vacation with an uncle who was a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he noticed this trend. So he sent me to go and see an eye specialist. And after doing the color test, I mean, I failed it so woefully. He asked me what I wanted to do. I mean, what did I aspire to be in the future? And I said, I want to be an artist. He said, forget it. You wouldn't you, you'd make an artist. You wouldn't be a good artist. But what he didn't know was um, we've been encouraged as children to read a lot. And one of my favorite uh, books that I read on magazines was the Reader's Digest. And there was an art, a feature on a totally blind artist who was painting. So when that doctor was saying I had to give up my dreams of being an artist, and he was talking to the wrong person. Because if, if a blind person who couldn't see was painting, and at least I could see, then um, I was going to do something about it. So well, in those days, there was painting by Dumbers. And then there were the paint sets that had the colors written you know, under it. So, OK, there's blue. I know uh, it's OK. This is blue and recognition. Because I had a passion yes. for, and my thing was to overcome a handicap. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they said, ask and you shall receive. My art masters knew I could draw very well. So if I had a problem, they helped me. And then I make use of my friends. I mean, I'm blind. If I can't see red, I'm walking through a red alley and I'm blind and I got friends. Hey, walk me. You know, you lead me. And so thanks to my, with a little help from my friends, family, and people who seem to be moved by what I was doing. The fact that I don't see color well has not prevented me from telling my story. So I paint a blue man. But the way I paint a blue man, the color doesn't matter. Because what the blue man is doing is what matters. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Sam, let's go to two exhibitions, or at least the, the one in London in 2007 and you played a prominent part in that exhibition. That exhibition had a theme, The Call. What's, what was this all about? The Call had been marinating in our minds for 25 years before it happened. Because uh, in 1982, when Ghana turned 25, our Silver Jubilee, mm -hmm. and the, the government was planning to celebrate our Silver Jubilee. But there was a politician who made a very crass comment about the fact that Ghana had not achieved anything, you know, to celebrate a silver jubilee. And um, we got really annoyed by that statement. So I challenged him, I said, what do you mean by that? If Ghana hasn't achieved anything, it has produced graduates in art. And I got a couple of friends of ours, of mine, who were graduates from the College of, uh, the College of Art and the University of Science and Technology to, um, we formed a team called Images, a group called Images. And um, we put up an exhibition to uh, prove the politician wrong. And uh, we decided that, OK, come the Golden Jubilee 25 years after, we'll be ready to show the world what 50 years of independence, what we'd achieved in 50 years of independence. So after 1982, we be, I mean, I've been a professional um, artist since then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, made a living full-time as an artist. Mm -hmm. And during that period, we re-educated ourselves. We delved into our, our culture, our history, or our story, mm -hmm. you know, using history as a reference to identify who we are as Ghanaians and Africans. And mm -hmm. so the call was a chance to when the country was celebrating 50 years of political independence. Mm -hmm. Ours was to make a statement of creative independence. So the call was to show our colonial, first of all, Ghanaians and our colonial masters what we've done with their help because we were taught by British art professors and professors from other parts of the world. But our expression was rooted in our Ghanaian experience. And um, we made an impact. It was very well received. And um, come 25 years after, if we're around for the Diamond Jubilee, 
the world would have to take notice because there will be art mm -hmm. that would really be a serving, serving um, a function, not just for aesthetic purposes, but a function of it being a very powerful nation building tool. Mm -hmm. What about home for us? Are you thinking of sending such exhibitions to Ghana for the world to converge and see and read about your messages? It's, it's happening. There, there's something very wonderful happening on our continent. And it's happening regardless of the fact that the Western art media always marginalizes us. Today, there are a lot of Africans buying art by Africans. We're building beautiful homes and adorning our homes with creations by ourselves. But then the, the classification. The West will not give us African fine artists who just paint the, the credit and the respect that we deserve. They would always go for the three-dimensional carvings and the uh, multimedia um, creations that come out of Africa. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to painting, no. I'm yet to see an, an African painting sell for over a million dollars or pounds sterling. Mm -hmm. Now, if that happens, I don't think anybody is going to be buying European art because we Africans have a story to tell with our art. Mm -hmm. that anybody, once our skills are recognized because we, are, we can tell the story with all the nuances, the cultural nuances and ethnic nuances, mm -hmm. that we do have the flavors. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to flavors, who is going to be going for bland stuff when the real deal is sitting right in front of you? And, I mean, the children are doing it. Yeah. We, we're inspiring a generation of artists who feel uh, that... You can make a decent living as an artist. But then, you know, we, we have to, we are the ones, the pioneers are always the ones who blaze the trail. Mm -hmm. um, but when we make it, there's a path, a new path for those who don't have to be cutting the undergrowth to roll down. Finally, Sam, if you were given the chance to be in a classroom in Ghana today, I'm just using Ghana as an example and you were teaching, talking about fine art to your students, students who believe that there's not much future in fine art, fine art out in the world for them, what would be your message to encourage them to pursue their dreams? I will um, work with them and let them see the joy in creating the work because the satisfaction must come from you enjoying what you do. The, um, the reward for it comes later. And um, we didn't, I didn't get into painting with the intention of making money out of it. I got into it because I figured it was a way of letting our people be able to stand up straight and feel proud as Africans, you know, I mean, I'd rather wear fabric that I created myself or fabric that somebody from my uh, community or my country or my continent has produced that gives me, gives me bragging rights as an African. You know, um, in the classroom, it is how my love, it's the love of art, the love to be able to use hand and mind and heart to create something beautiful mm -hmm. that would impact the people around you. When our parents, when the children take their work home and their parents see, oh, did you do that? Yes. I mean, that is beautiful. That, 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 that um, encouragement is all a lot of the children need. It, it, it gives us that, uh, it gives the children the, the feeling that prevents them from resorting to criminal and use, I mean, troublesome, what do you call it, uh, mischievous activity, mm. you know. And um, art, as life, the, the, the greatest artist is our creator. So when we encourage the children to create, they are in harmony with the essence of this beautiful world of ours. And we, I would be then like a teacher. And what does the teacher do? Inspire. Mm -hmm. Sam, it was very inspiring to talk with you. I must confess that you're indeed a great artist.
Thank you so much.